Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, I am gonna run you through our weekly checkup. Uh, just showing you what we got done this week uh, from Monday to Friday. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So when we started this week, we had absolutely nothing to show for it. The client had torn out the deck and we had a mud pit here. And that's all we had. So the first thing we did is actually, if you wanna turn around and look, we laid down some stuff called slat tracks and this enabled us to get our machine, our uh, Ditch Witch SK800 back here without too much of an issue. Now, it doesn't look too harmed right now, but it rained eight inches Monday and Tuesday, four inches on Monday, four inches on Tuesday. And it was like a flood back here. So every time we walked across these slat tracks, we were walking in four inches of water. It was awful on top of that. We did some grading back here. We took out some old concrete and then we had a mud pit. I was surprised the machine was able to run through it as well as it did. We got the grading done Monday. Tuesday, we brought in three yards of gravel and spread it out. Oh, Monday, we also got our helical piles installed. So helical piles are a way for us to create a foundation or a footing for a deck. And thank goodness we did. You can kind of see one right here. They're on an adjustable saddle. So we drive them into the ground to a certain specified pressure. And then we're able to use the saddle to hold our beams if we're at the right elevation. If not, we might have to put a piece of lumber or timber or something to hold between the base of the pile and the bottom of the beam. But we were able to set all of these in place at elevation and then we're able to screw them up or down to get it to the proper height we wanted. So once the helical piles were installed, we ran gravel all through this area so we weren't traipsing through a muck pit because that's what it, exactly what it would have become. So we laid down some landscape fabric. It wasn't really for weeds. It was more for a separation between the mud and the gravel. So let me show you something really quick. We have a little bit of hydraulicking going. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not in the ground. It's, it, the, the water table has dropped, but I could sit here the other day and bounce up and down like this, and the ground was moving quite a bit. So it's actually firmed up since we've had a little bit less rain and things have had, uh, not, they're not so saturated anymore. Once we had our gravel spread, then we started mounting our ledger boards to the house. That's like the first thing. So we cut away the height of the siding and we use a track saw to do that. So we had a nice flat spot and the siding's nice and straight with the track saw. Okay, we got that in and then we went ahead and we, we mounted all of our ledgers and then we set our beams into our piles, which we kind of, we set them up with a laser so we kind of knew the elevation within a half an inch. Then we were able to spin them up and down to get the proper elevation. So it was very helpful to have those kind of preset where we, we knew we'd need them. A couple of them we had to raise and a couple of them we had to lower just a little bit. And then we were able to get all of our beams set to elevation. We put G tape on top of the beams. We had to dry them out because everything was wet. Okay, so we used a heat gun to dry out the tops of the beams, but that took a while. So after that, then I was able to get my joist layout done on top of the beams. And I used a silver Sharpie to lay out all the joist locations. And then after that, we started installing the joists. Now that the joists are installed, we put our joist hangers on, we attached everything to the beams, the joists are all toenailed to the beams. Then we put in our over beam roll blocking and what roll blocking does in an earthquake, it keeps things from rolling back and forth. So it helps keep your joists straight over the top of the beams, which I like because you know, joists are not always gonna sit flat or plumb on top of your beam. And this gets us within 95% accuracy. Here you go right here. These are on a 45, but same principle. Once that was done, we finished all of our surface blocking, which you can see over here. That's for all of our surface border materials that are going in. It's just a decent look that we're going for. It's going to do a surface border all the way around the deck. So once we finish that, now we're G-taping all the joists and getting everything ready for decking. And then the last part of our framing is going to be we're adding a access ramp right here, right where I'm standing. We're gonna put an access ramp right here. So once we get our deck G taped, then we're gonna start working on the ramp. All right, I wanted to go through a couple of the brackets that we use to tie everything together because as you're building a deck, you're gonna be required by code 
to use certain applications for a positive connection, okay? So in all these scenarios, we've used a Simpson strong tie bracket or connector, and we use their fasteners to go with that connector so that we're not compromising the structure by using a different fastener for that connector. So everything that we've used pretty much are called SD screws. They're secure strong drive screws. All right, over there, you're gonna see that is an L70Z, which is a 90 degree bracket that helps tie one member to another. So those are two beams that are tied together. Now we've also used timber screws to screw them together, but then we go back and put a bracket on basically anywhere there's a 90 degree connection that we can to hold that connection together for a very long time. So those are all Z-Max rated. So they work with our pressure treated lumbers that we have here in the Pacific Northwest, and they're designed to last longer than a typical metal connector would. That's an L70Z and it's made for two by eight or eight inch construction. And then we have an LS70Z, which is skewable, what the S is for, which skewable means you can bend it. You're allowed to bend it one time to the angle you need. So we have one of those over here. This is an LS and it's usually used in a 45 degree situation or variable angles, but this one is a 45 degree angle. And then it's bendable so that you have this positive connection. You can use them on both sides. We happen to just use it on the inside uh, with some two and a half inch SD screws. So ultra secure connection. So we have timber connectors going into through the side of this beam that connects to this other beam. We have some also going through this way from this beam into the end grain of that beam. And then we have the metal connection as well. So very secure, great way to basically keep that connection together. And then one more connection that we have is our joist hanger, which is the strong tie LUS28Z, which is connected from the joist to the house. We use a short SD screws, inch and a half going into the ledger, and then two and a half inch SD screws going into the through point where it goes through the joist and into the ledger as well. They call it double shear fastening. And we can use either a three inch Tico style nail or a two and a half inch SD screw, which is approved for those hangers. Another secure connection that's gonna be required by code if you're building a deck and you wanna hang your joists onto the house. So stay tuned and see how we do and see where we end up next week from progress from this week. I thank you very much for coming to our channel and watching this video. If you did like it, or you learned something, please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified when we're putting out new content. Uh, don't forget to comment on this video and share it with all your friends, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.